Good evening. Ira Epstein with your Metal Market Wrap-Up. And this wrap-up is for Monday, the 21st of March, 2022. And the time right now, about 6.15 p.m. Central Time. Now, before we get even into the first chart, I want to remind you, I'm holding a live webinar this coming Thursday. You're invited. There's no cost to attend it. It begins at 12.15 p.m. in terms of me opening it for you to get into it. At 12.30 we begin, and at 12.50 it is over. I do not make a recording of it available as I want you to join in. If you don't want to join in, well, then you don't deserve to see what's in there, in my opinion. How do you get into it or an invite if you haven't received it? And I did send the first ones out today. Simply take your cursor, move it up to the top of the screen. You'll see an icon pop at that point in time. On the icon, click on it, fill out the form. That's your registration form. Once completed, you'll get immediately back uh, an acceptance with your user ID and password. We do have user ID and passwords. They change every time I hold one of these webinars. So you want to get that. And also, on the receipt that you, you've got your user ID and your password, you're going to get from us an email in there. And it's got my email address. Any questions you have, click on it. Just write me back. It'll open up your email, write me what you want me to cover, and I'll try to get it done for you. So today was about the first day that we saw some of the Fed personnel out there on the trail again. We saw Mr. Bostic from the Atlanta Fed, and we saw Fed Chair Powell uh, speaking before a business conference uh, today, and I think it was around noon that he was doing this. Obviously, the key question, and they were very good. It was a, it was a good conference. Uh, not bad questions, really nice ones. You know, the Fed's behind the, uh, the curve right here. You know, they, they're bit, so much is saying. So what are you going to do? We're going to raise rates. What if they're not enough? They'll be enough. We're going to raise them faster then. So, again, what they're warning you is we saw a quarter point hike. If the Fed doesn't think it's making any headway, Right now, there's a 61% chance, if you look at Fed fund futures, that the Fed is going to raise to a 50-point hike at the next meeting. So that is on the table with him. He didn't say you have to do it. They'll look at the data. They'll see what's going in. They blame the uh, Russian war, certainly, for causing a lot of uncertainty. The other part is a strong labor market, uh, but that gives them the power to raise rates. They have two edicts, right? Controlling inflation and full employment. They got the full employment for all purposes, so they can turn their whole attention to this and they're not gonna let go. That makes trying to get bullish in the stock market difficult, but I think it makes buying in the metal markets easier. Does that make sense? You have the inflation scenario. They're not gonna be able to solve it in one, two, or three meetings. That isn't gonna happen. So you've got more of a clear runway for a takeoff on some of those markets. When I look at the weekly chart of gold, the market is staying over the 18-week average. As long as it does that, it gives me a bullish bias. When I look at the daily bar chart, the market is pulled back and just jumping around right here trying to figure out what to do next. I move to the June gold now. And I think that if June gold gets over 1955-60, I think the buyers are going to come out. I think they're wrong if you get back under 1922-20, if you take out 1955-60. That number also coincides with wanting to be over the 18-day average of 1954-50. So I think that not only will they buy the market up there, I think they'll stay with it if they get that close over the 18-day average. If it gets back under it, you'll scare some out. But 1922-20 is the key if you get that buy signal. What about getting bearish right here? Well, we'll cover that in a minute. The trend is down, but you do have a pattern of what? Attempting to make a higher low. You haven't done it yet, okay? It's still lower highs, lower lows. Momentum's very oversold. Oversold is another filter. When you get an oversold market, I walk away from it. Why? It doesn't mean you're going to embed. How do you correct an oversold condition? Typically by going sideways to higher. The other thing you can do is embed it, which now keeps it not only oversold, it converts to embedding. And to me, if that occurred, I think you're going back to these lows. The gold-silver ratio is failing 
against the 18-day average. Failing means when it rallies to it, it's not able to stay over it. That's a sign that silver is gaining on gold. As that number drops, you need fewer ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. When you look at the silver market, like gold, you're in the battleground zone. If the market takes out 2552, I expect to see buyers show up. Maybe they'll use the small contracts, the, the minis. Uh, I think they put stops back under 2498 and they'll look to see can they get up, believe it or not, to the 2673 level again. Possibility. Why do I say that? Because you're oversold. Get a buy signal when you start correcting the oversold, it can change the game. What are the bears doing here? Those that are bearish, I think, are sitting. You've got higher lows and lower highs. I don't think the bear case is there just yet. So I, I think I see the possibility of a could be to the buy side. In the copper market, if copper gets up and over 476, watch out. You open the door up again for the 488 level. That would give you the higher lows and the higher highs. Right now, you don't have a trend. You have a higher high and a lower low. You have nothing. Platinum market, higher high, lower low. What did I tell you as we were falling here into this number? I was telling you that I thought the pros would cover all shorts. You're not embedded. You're hitting the lower Bollinger Band. It was a vertical price rise. I don't know how to get short those to begin with. And, you know, I didn't know what it was going to do, but now I do. The market's trying to get back to the 18-day average. It's still not in a trend. Last in the Palladium, we've had a contra-trend rally. Now, let me explain that definition. The big event that I look for is where is the market in relation, the prices, to the red line, the 18-day average of closes. When the market is under it, the bias is down. It's that simple. When the market is over it, the bias is up. So if my swing line throws out a buy signal by making the pattern of higher highs and higher lows, that's an uptrend. Where might it culminate? Well, logically at that line in the sand, the 18-day average, and that's what you've done. To get this market bullish now, you need to close over 26.39, no, over 26.41.35. You already have the swing line up. Now you need to close over that 18-day average. Until it does, you don't have anything on this chart. In the dollar index, you have a downtrend, but the bias up. This is, again, one of those. If the market gets back and either gets under 97, 71 and a half or closes under the 18 day average, a downtrend signals in place. Let's reverse this. If the market from here, and this is uh, not tonight, this is how the market finished today. But if the market takes out 98.64 without first taking out 98.16, what do I think? Higher lows, higher highs. You've already corrected an overbought condition. You open the door for 99.94 on the upper Bollinger Band. So I hope to see you at the webinar. Remember, you can just take your cursor, click up there, fill out the form. You'll be taken care of that way. I'm I. Rapstein. See you in the financial market wrap-up. Take care.